Welcome to the Bill Rice Ranch. I want us to look at 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 today. And I want you to see a special place here on the ranch, Memorial Park. It's beautiful. You'll enjoy it. Come on, let's go. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. I never come to Memorial Park without thinking of 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with verse 13. And quite frankly, I never read that passage of Scripture, or very seldom do I read it, without thinking of Memorial Park. Both the passage and the place remind us of things and people in the past. For example, the passage says, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. The phrase asleep, or the word asleep here, is a reference to people who love the Lord, who trusted Christ as Savior, who died and were buried. And so the Bible describes them as being people who are asleep. There are many people laid to rest here at Memorial Park who sleep in Jesus. For example, John Rice and his wife, Lois, are both buried here. Uncle John was a great evangelist. He was born in 1895, and he had great revival campaigns. Large services where he preached the gospel and explained to people how they could know their sins were forgiven and how they were on their way to heaven. In the 30s, John Rice began the Sword of the Lord. It's a bi-weekly newspaper publication that still exists to this day, 40 years after his, John Rice's, homegoing. Joe B. Rice is buried here as well, the second Rice evangelist. Joe Rice was probably the most sympathetic or empathetic preacher I've ever heard. And then Bill and Kathy Rice are buried here, my parents. Bill and Kathy Rice came to Murfreesboro, Tennessee in 1950 for a revival campaign. Dad preached for four weeks in that revival. And while they were here, Dad came out to see this property. Both he and mother were interested in finding some property so that they could start a camp primarily for deaf young people. Their daughter, Betty, my sister, was deaf. And so they were concerned that deaf people see the gospel, that they hear the Bible, that they understand that they could be saved by grace through placing their trust and faith in Jesus Christ. So dad came and saw this property and then he and mother bought this property in 1950. The original track was 900 acres. There are now 1300 acres here, but dad paid 20 bucks an acre for the original 900. It's worth, I'm sure, slightly more now. And in 1953, dad and mother had their first camp week for deaf young people, 12 deaf teenagers showed up. Now in every year since, the Bill Rice Ranch has provided special deaf camps for those who cannot hear. In fact, in the summer of 2020, we will have our 68th summer of reaching deaf young people with the gospel. So Memorial Park reminds you of the past. And so does the passage in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, those who have lived before, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. 
For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so will they be raised. God will bring them back with him, the Bible says. So it talks about a future event. It talks about the future. And all of this, the Bible says, when you speak of it, when you read the words of 1 Thessalonians 4, you should be comforted and you should comfort others with these words. Well, how can we be comforted when we, when we think about dying and death and those who've passed on before us? Well, the answer is found in this simple phrase, if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. In other words, if you believe in the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ, that Christ as God died in our place, paying for our sins, if you're trusting him, you can have eternal life. It's explained even more fully, I think, in 1 Corinthians 15, where the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 says that Jesus Christ died for our sins. There's a couple of things we can learn from this passage. Number one, we're sinners. And the Bible states that repeatedly and clearly. In the book of Psalms, the Bible says, For there is none that doeth good, no, not one. David, the psalmist, said, Behold, I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Proverbs says, There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Romans says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Now, if the Bible didn't say that we are sinners, it would seem that everybody would know that anyway. I mean, don't you know that we're not perfect, that we sin? If you have children, don't you know that people are born with a bent towards sin? God gave to Mary and to me three children. We love all three of them. They're all married themselves now and have children of their own. But I never had to teach my kids to do things that were wrong or sinful. I never said to my son, son, you know, you're, you're, you're far too kind to your sisters. You're, you're too thoughtful. You're, you're far too perfect. You, you need to pick on your sisters. You're older than they are. You ought, you ought to bug them now and then. Any fusses or disagreements that my kids had, they had in, in course of their natural lives. They are by nature sinners. Well, where, where do they get that? Well, from their parents. The Bible says all have sinned. And the Bible says the wages are the payment, the penalty. The wages of sin is death. The very thing we think about when we come to Memorial Park. Sin results in death. And you know, the fact that you and I, that we are dying people, is evidence or proof that we are sinful people. And so the results of our sin is death, separation from God, hell, and then the lake of fire forever and ever. But there is cause for hope. There's a wonderful truth here in this passage. If we believe that Jesus died and rose again. In other words, if you put your trust, your faith in Christ for salvation. If you understand that when Jesus died, he died for you. After all, Jesus was perfect. He never sinned. If Christ never sinned, why, why should he have died? Well, he didn't die for his sin. He had none. He died for yours. He died for mine. Christ died, says the scriptures, for our sins. 
He died in my place. He died in your place, the just Christ, for the unjust, the rest of us. Christ died for our sins. So the Bible says when you believe in Christ, when you trust in Christ, you can have eternal life. John 1 says, but to as many as received him, Christ, to them gave he the power or the authority to become the sons or the children of God, even to them that believe on his name. 1 John 5 says, and this is the record that God hath given to us eternal life, and this life is in his Son. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son of God hath not life. And these things, God says, have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. And so here's the way it works. A man says, God, I, I know I'm a sinner. I know I can't save myself. I know I can't be good enough or religious enough or do right often enough to get myself to heaven. But I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place. I believe that he was buried and that he rose again on the third day. And I believe that he did all of that for my sin. He did that for me. And so today, as best I know how, I trust Christ to be my Savior. I trust Christ to do for me what I cannot do for myself. What about you? If you've never trusted Christ, you could pray a prayer something like this right now. God, I know I'm a sinner. I can't be good enough. I can't be religious enough. I can't do right often enough to get myself to heaven. But I believe that Jesus Christ died in my place. I believe he paid for my sin. And as best I know how, I'm trusting Christ right now to be my Savior. Save me, Lord Jesus, right now. Pray that prayer and then live in confidence that you have eternal life once you've trusted in Christ. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain to the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds, to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. When you trust Christ as Savior, you can be comforted with the words in 1 Thessalonians 4, and you can comfort others. And may God permit that that is the case in your life. Well, thank you for meeting with us today. Perhaps we can meet again like this in a few days. In the meantime, may God bless you.